Hey guys, Scott here. Have you ever seen a more behavior image in your entire life? Probably. Um, I wanted to bring up a, a prompt, basically, for the whole MMR thing. I've already talked to death about the MMR system and all that stuff, why I don't think it's a good idea for this game in particular. Still a very good idea for a lot of games, but not this one. Um, but I've already made 15 videos about that, so I'm not going to rehash the same points there. I just want to bring up a prompt that I talked to a, a lot of people about in Twitter replies and stuff like that. That made a lot of people sort of question themselves, and I want to just bring it to a, a wider uh, audience. Uh, the prompt is, who is this actually for? Who, what, who is the MMR system actually for? Because it seems like the most common sentiment I've seen from people that are for the system, it's people, survivors mostly, that are saying, uh, I want to finally have, you know, not shitty teammates. I want to have good teammates finally. And with an MMR system... I'll finally get matched with, you know, uh, good teammates. And I'm like, okay, fair. That, that's certainly a very good thing that you would want. And so I respond to them basically, okay, well, do you like only going against Nurse, Spirit, and Blight with four slowdowns? And of course they say no, they don't want to only go against that. And then I think here is the dilemma there. The thing is, though, if you want to have good teammates, that means you yourself have to be a good player. And if you yourself are a good player with high MMR, that means you're only going against the killers that can also make it to that high MMR level, which is going to be mostly the same three killers. So it comes down to a conundrum where basically you have to say that you like going against 50 spirits in a row, or you have to admit that you're actually not that good at the game. Because there, there's no other scenario there. Because you're not going to get amazing teammates if you yourself are not really amazing, because it's supposedly... It's supposed to, you know, match like skilled players with each other, right? So if you're an amazing player, you're only going to get, you know, go against those amazingly strong killers over and over again. Um, and if you're not an amazing player, well, then you're not going to get amazing teammates because you don't deserve them because you're you yourself are not an amazing player. So my, my whole point is bringing up this scenario where either A, you have to admit you like going against these killers forever and that's the only killers you're actually going to go against. Or B, you have to admit you're actually not as good as you think you are. And that can be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people because that is not something that people really like admitting. So for those people, I don't understand, like, because I, no one wants to only go against, like, Nurse and Spirit forever. Even competitive players don't only want to do that. I've talked to a lot of competitive players before, and they don't even like going against Nurse. They do it, and they, you know, Nurse and Spirit, mostly Spirit. Um, and, you know, they still do it and they still win a lot of the time because they can still spread out and have very strong macro game and stuff like that. Um, but the, the fun that they're having is not really coming from the killer that they're going against. It's coming from their coordination and macro teamwork and things like that. And the thing is, I've watched, um, competitive matches and I've listened in on comms and stuff like that. And I think it's silly because of how broken and RNG this game is, but I'm not going to, you know, shit on people having fun. It sounds like they're having a good time sweating and calling out things like that. Um, so, you know, that, that's fine, but that's the thing. Even those competitive players, they're smart enough to realize the only reason the tournaments like that, even at that high level, even work or highest level that they even work is because there are immense restrictions placed on both sides in order to make the game a bit less ridiculous. Um, because they know if you could bring in four DSs, four unbreakables, four insta heals every match, like what the fuck, what is the killer going to do? Like, it's just... The game does not work at that level without a huge amount of restrictions and map choices and things like that. The problem is, with a high MMR system in just random queues, none of these restrictions will be in place. And it'll even further exacerbate how broken this game can be, uh, especially in favor of Survivor. And so that's the thing. The competitive players, they're good. They're smart and they know that. They know the game only works at that super high level to an extent because of huge restrictions that are placed on the game. but those won't exist in normal matchmaking with high MMR. So even that doesn't work. And the thing is, those players, at least for, I'm not speaking for all of them, but um, most of them, they just tend to stick to Kill Your Friends games and scrims and stuff like that to practice against, you know, other very good teams and stuff like that. And when they finally do join solo queue at the end of the day, they don't want to sweat again. They don't want to only still go against the same spirit over and over again. Um, they want to cool down from all that stuff. So I can't imagine even that type of player really wants this in a world where there's only one game mode and then that's, this is all you have. So I, I keep circling back to the question, who is this actually for? Like the only group I could possibly think it's for is the average player who doesn't really care if they win, they just want to have fun. And I say, great, that's that's a excellent demographic 
you know, to focus on because that's at the end of the day, the whole point of any game is to really have fun. The people that are just focusing on that and not necessarily just the winning portion of it are, um, you know, a good demographic to look towards. But the thing is, though, those players don't really even care about a super accurate MMR system either because they don't really care. Like, it's they don't really care that much about winning or losing. So the current matchmaking system, as dysfunctional as it is, it's enough. And it doesn't really harm anybody else on the other sides of the wheel. And it's just, you know, it's adequate. It's fine. But, the, you know, even if with this MMR system, I don't think their experience will change that much either because they're going to get matched with other people that just don't really care that much, which is just sort of what the current matchmaking is right now. So even that, it doesn't seem like it's for that. I just, who is this actually for? That That's the prompt that I'm making with this video. If you guys have a... Um, discussion to be made in the comments. I, I would love to hear it because I, I, I genuinely don't know who this is actually for. I can't think of any demographic that actually wants this. I feel like fucking J. Allen Brack saying, you think you want it, but you don't. Like the, the players that think that they want it, the like the survivors that say, I want good teammates, they're not realizing that they're actually admitting they're not good players or they're psychotic and like only going against Spears. So like it's just something's not adding up. I just want to see from the other perspective. I'm not um, eliminating the possibility that there is an actual uh, great argument and there's a, a demographic that this is good for. And I just want to hear what that is from. I don't want to minimize that. I just want to hear uh, what that is because I don't know. I can't figure it out. Um, but that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.